I'm curious, Jeremiah, kind of how you see that through the eyes of a, of a social media practitioner. So our listeners, as they do and live social media each and every day, I know a complimentary topic you oftentimes talk about is digital transformation. You know, this mm-hmm. idea of how organizations can leverage data, your words, to deliver customer value, innovate with agility and sustain vitality. I'm curious kind of how sure. social practitioners deal with this, you know, what are the biggest challenges? Is it the challenge of data silos? Is it the people themselves kind of being the silos that you've got people that are marketing or PR or customer service or operations that really aren't talking to each other? When you go in and sit down with these practitioners and their executives, right. what, do you, what do you tell them? The social media professionals are one of the first groups communications to go digital outside of the IT department. I mean, no, there's no question that the, the digital teams were the innovators, but now we're seeing other business units catching up, whether it's sales trying to catch up with the digital marketing leads that are coming in or new CX teams that are trying to expand and provide digital touch points at every single phase. Or we even see at the retail, they're all trying to integrate digital kiosks or AR, or whatever it is. So the thing is every single group is trying to integrate digital, but they're often doing it in their own way. Jay, I was on your, your website and I saw you have some really awesome um, marketing digital diagnostics tools. I mean, that's a great way to help to look at how a company might understand everything from one get go. And, and we're also doing something similar, but from a broader perspective, looking across the whole organization and interviewing stakeholders from all those types of departments that I just mentioned to find out their digital maturity. And, and Adam, and this, I mean, Obviously, Salesforce, where, where you work, is a big leader, a big component of trying to connect the enterprise. So you, you know firsthand, of course, with your, your work and your clients, how that happens. But the biggest challenge is the culture and the, and the silos of the data are spread apart and they're not connected. And, and I think it's really important. I was actually having dinner with Alan Weber, an IDC analyst last night, and he said, so many companies are focused on digital transformation, but they forgot why. It's to, it's to anticipate customer needs to provide them with that great customer experience. I mean, that's something you see resonating in Jay's content. I was on his site just today looking at it. And, and so we can't forget that um, digital transformation is for not unless you understand it's about delivering a great customer experience. And, and that means, and I'll summarize all of that. It means that the company, all of the employees and all of the departments need to act as one. That's really what it comes down to. You, of course, are, are familiar both with uh, social media successes and, and social media failures. When you come across the latter, Jeremiah, do you believe that social media failures are, are more cultural, um, sort of operational strategy weaknesses or, or execution? W- when, do you, when do you sort of see, yeah, that's the typical shortcoming? Um, from when brands screw up in social media, it's because they were culturally not aligned with what's happening in society. And we've actually seen some agencies emerge that are culture agencies just to help with that. Um, So that's when I see companies screw up. Uh, For example, on the flip side, a company that did it right, like Nike placed a real clear bet. I'm sure they had numbers and forecasts with Colin Kaepernick. They knew that was going to be extremely explosive and they knew people were going to burn their shoes, but they knew more people were probably going to buy their shoes and they knew they're going to get a brand lift in terms of quantity of metrics. Uh, So they were in touch with what was happening at a red hot topic in America that went all the way up to the highest executive branch. And so they knew how to play that plus with sports, you know, fanaticism. So they knew they were in touch culturally. So that's an example of a brand doing it right and or wrong. Isn't that strange? It's culture. Jeremiah, you just took the words right out of my mouth was that if you think about kind of what we've been talking about on this podcast so far, we've been talking about kind of brand and, and culture. We've talked about the cultural and the change management aspect of, of the challenges that organizations have, certainly even in their social media capabilities. And my question for you is this, that you know, 10, 15 years ago, when, when we all kind of got started in this social space and you as, as one of the godfathers of the, the voice of, of what social is, would you have ever expected this, discussion that we're having now not to be about technology, but more about to be the psychology of all of us and our consumers. 
That was the initial hope, actually, is that we would move away from centralized institutions and instead it would be the human to human connecting. It would be person to person, you know, moving away from advertisements, moving away from corporations or corporate speak or press releases for the human to human. So I think that's actually was the original premise. And in many ways, we're kind of returning back to that. Um, but it's hard to draw the lines now between what is corporate content, what is own content, sponsored content. I mean, it's really diff product placement, right? You know, it's very, very difficult, right? You know, I could hold this bottle up. Was I paid to hold this up or not? You, you don't really know. Does it matter? <laughs> North Face is getting a little blip if you're watching the video. So yeah, it's really hard to tell now. We are burnt out from internets. We are burnt out from fighting about politics. And, and, and those are just for regular people. Now imagine that's your job is to communicate online and you're managing a community for a big corporation. By the way, I know the community managers at Salesforce, they're amazing people, but politics and environmental discussions and infighting, all of that stuff is creeping now into the corporate discussion boards. There's, and they cannot turn their, their phones off. They're, they're having to, to deal with this and manage it. And, and the amount of alerts, alerts that they're receiving and the amount of different platforms, we have TikTok and there's a whole bunch of other ones that are emerging. It's just, it's just too much. Too much internets. So the theme for 2020, and frankly, shouldn't just last for a year, is we do need to take care of ourselves. The community managers are the primary face to the world from the corporation. They're the human face. It is really important that they shine their best face. And you know the old adage, uh, you really can't love somebody else until you've loved yourself. 